Welcome to Medical Confessions, your remedy for serious medicine. I'm Jen. I'm April. And I'm Scott. Today we're going to be talking about capsaicin and all the many medical benefits and eye stinging things that go along with that. It's going to be an interesting show mm -hmm. today because April and I just confessed off camera that we didn't do as much homework as we should have. We were distracted by other things. Uh, a couple of us worked last night and were rushed, as you can tell by our molecule on the board. <laughs> it's not going to be, but we'll see. Sometimes our best episodes are ones where there's not a lot of prep and it's more uh, just natural conversation. Oh, yeah. So well, You decide which one of us is well rested. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no bitterness. <laughs> so, what's the deal with capsaicin? Uh, capsaicin. Well, it's the everybody kind of knows it's in the chili peppers, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, first truly synthesized in 1919. Um, but it's actually got some really cool medical benefits that I just found out about recently. So um, you already knew that it was a quick relief from pain. Correct. <laughs> okay. And um, it's really how it how it is. Uh, reacting in the body, there's a group of um, ion channels um, called transient receptor potential ion channels, and there's a subclass of those called vanilla, um, vanilloid uh, receptors, um, and it's the first one of those. So TRPV1 is what they call that. Um, and so if you look up capsaicin, that's the receptor it's working on. Um, and what that receptor does, it actually is in uh, mainly associated with your peripheral nerves. So Everybody knows you get, uh, you know, you're cutting up some jalapenos and you, you'll feel the burning if you touch the wrong things. Um, anyways, uh, so what it's doing, it's hitting that same nerve that uh, is responsible for letting you know that something's too hot. Um, so this uh, particular TRPV1 receptor will be stimulated when you touch anything greater than 109 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then you'll feel the burning. Um, it also reacts to low pHs and um, some um, endogenous uh, lipid problem, fat cell problems, um, but mostly uh, it's that uh, temperature control thing. Um, and so that's why when you eat a jalapeno, it feels hot because that's the same sensation you're getting when you're touching something oh, hot. I guess I never really thought about it that deeply before. It's just like, it's hot, it's spicy. Yeah. yeah, well, and that it is like the most common spice in the world um, for that very reason. It's actually the same, that same receptor is what uh, um, wasabi is hitting mm. um, when you have wasabi, wasabi and uh, mm, some too. spicy mustards that's the same. Mm same uh, kind of receptor that's getting stimulated um but uh with that because of that um there's also some cool medical benefits that go along with it um there's another thing that it does there's a, a subclass uh or there is a, a class of molecules they call it substance p which makes me think of like james bond or something like what is substance p but that's what they call it um and it uh, is the main thing released uh in this particular case it's a neurotransmitter released by your body when um uh, in response to any sort of stressor. Um, and it's the first thing that gets released, releases super quick. Um, well, capsaicin, since you know early 1900s, it's been known that it, it diminishes that rather quickly. Mm -hmm. And so they used to think that that's what's giving you your pain relief was that it's, it's breaking down this substance P. Um, but that's actually not the case. What it's doing is that receptor, those ion channels, what it does is once it hits that receptor, it'll open up those channels and calcium and sodium rushes in and sends off that nerve impulse and you think it's hot. Well, because it's sending off that nerve impulse, now that cellular membrane's resting potential is so high, the availability or the available calcium around can't st make another impulse. And so you then can't feel any more pain uh, because of that. And what they found is about an 8% solution of capsaicin on your skin for about 60 minutes will reduce that pain response for about 12 weeks. Whoa. Whoa. Pretty impressive. That's huge. Um, that is. But that's a really high percentage of capsaicin. So, you know, like your normal peppers are about 0.1 to 1% capsaicin. Oh, this um, is super low. This is like 0 0.025 capsaicin. Oh. It's so really low. So why don't low. they make it higher? Well, because the other is is because of the health problem. Because at really high doses, you can get some health problems too. You can get um, some gastric ulcers. You can actually get some liver necrosis with it as well. Ooh. It's pretty, uh, it's a known thing at these higher levels, um, which is why actually a lot of controversy with pepper sprays are out there because some of those super high dosage ones can actually have some health problems. Don't keep getting pepper spray. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> fighting the cops. And, um, I actually saw one of 
the patients we saw recently was <laughs> complaining and he was like, um, you need to uh, write up that cop for assault. He headlocked me and he put me in a headlock and was choking me out. And <laughs> I was like, well, what were you doing? And he's like, I was just doing nothing. So I looked over <laughs> and he's like, except running at me and attacking me. So yeah, I put you in a headlock. <laughs> I was like, all right, whatever. Oh. Um, <laughs> Sidetrack. Pretty minimal use of force, actually. Yeah. Considering, I feel that. like you didn't get shot, so yeah. there's that. No, not tased. Um, you should probably be happy with that. But that headlock maneuver they do now. Um, <laughs> anyways, so yeah, actually, um, so one of the problems with that high percentage in that study was they put these people in a closed room and they were taking off these patches, and that just aerosolized oh. capsaicin was around the room, burning people's eyes, and because it gets in mucous membranes and. Um, Again, anyways, one of those studies you wish you didn't do. <laughs> well, and they've actually studied capsaicin in these lower levels on people, and they can't really get good results because a lot of the people won't continue using it because it's just like a pep. You get it on your skin if you don't wash off appropriately. It's getting on your clothes and on your sheets and on your right. pillows, and then you go back and the next day. And is you're, the pain uh, relief, you know, I wonder, um, similar to like um, like a Bengay or something that maybe is? I mean, I think I think Bengay stinks and is gross, but you know, would people choose other pain relief methods um, to avoid those side Maybe, effects? but some of those, like, di diabetic neuropathy is hugely painful. And, uh, you know, some of those, uh, you know, neuropathies where people, you know, uh, you know, have excited neurons in their skin. And so just touching them is super painful. They swear by this stuff that it works really well. And you can like see... With fibromyalgia like one of those maybe um yeah fibromyalgia is a whole nother class of things okay. we probably shouldn't get into yeah. in this particular episode because i would just do it injustice yeah 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 I, and i, I would, just know like the I'm commercials biased. show it that you know it's pain all over and it is so, and it yeah, is yeah. right um so and that's in you know that's what technically it is fibromyalgia so it's an abnormal nerve fibers right. basically now what that abnormality is is yeah. The subject of debate and where I'm biased. Yeah. So anyways, um, uh, but no, they, yeah, I mean, those higher percentage solutions of capsaicin, you get, so it's prescription strength. You can't get that 8% just over the counter. Um, maybe in Mexico. Uh, maybe Mexico. <laughs> I don't know. Or Canada. Who knows? Yeah, you know, I'm like. Europe. Um, but no, the FDA has approved that now and they're, they're studying it for all sorts of things. I mean, capsaicin in general, um, because of how it reacts with uh, that substance P yeah. and inflammation, they, uh, prostate cancers, it's helping out in rats. It's it's actually helped with prostate cancers, so certain types of lung cancers. Can we put some on? Like, I'm interested. I really want to know what it feels. Yeah. I mean, I've had family members use it and they get redness and they said it's burning, but oh, then really? they wash it off. Yeah. Because oh, I liked that it says no mess sponge applicator. <laughs> oh. Well, and this one I think has right, menthol too, so it'll... I chose my face mask for that same reason. <laughs> like, it was clean. <laughs> Not a mess. Well, this one should smell So, good. how much does, like, a container of this cost? Uh, this was eight ninety nine at oh, Fred Meyer. Oh, that's pretty affordable. Yeah. Well, and this, I think, is a lower dose, because I do have some of this cream at home for... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is no mess. Right across the <laughs> wrist. Right across. Oh. Well, I, that's a sensitive spot, you know, like, part, so... And then that finger, and then I'm gonna put it in my eye later. <laughs> <laughs> As every guy knows, don't go to the bathroom after cutting out the penis. That's a guy Let problem. You wash your hands. Here. Okay. Um, I'll let you know when I feel something. Yeah, well, and I'm, I'm curious to see if you will at such this low percent. I mean, this is even lower than like a green pepper. I wish I actually. Has. Oh, really? Yeah, green you're... peppers have nothing in them. Well, like, yeah, they're... it's like 0.1 to 1% total. And I um, hmm. wish I would have had like an injury or something that. Oh, yeah, you don't want to over it on the open wounds. Not open wounds. I just oh. mean like a strained wrist or something that was painful right now where I might notice the difference. Oh. Well, it depends. Maybe not because that's going to be more inflammation pain more than likely. Okay. Um, and this is just strictly working on your axons and your nerve cells. So maybe the, an arthritis? The, after, oh, osteoarthritis is huge. Okay. Um, um, it's actually one of the main things they use that 8% for. Yeah. Um, uh, diabetic neuropathies. We talked about... Um, any sort of neuropathy that has to do with your peripheral nerves mm. it'll work great for. Um, and that's what it's kind of being used for now. But on the off-label side, they're studying it for all sorts of things. Right. And I think I was telling you guys before this, it was pretty exciting to read some of the studies, but all of them are, a lot of them anyway, not all of them, are having to end sooner because of the temperature control problems that people have because this, this TRPV1 gene also helps regulate 
temperature control in your yeah. body and it's actually why you sweat because your body thinks you're too hot so you're sweating when you eat like chili yeah. peppers yeah yeah i've um, seen some like my dad i think i've told you guys this before um, as a kid, he would bring bowls of jalapenos to, like, we'd be eating, like, spaghetti, and he would set that down and eat it with his meal, and it would be three or four into it before he'd start, but he would get, like, beads of sweat across it. I don't know why he liked it so much. My dad, same, same thing. thing. He eats them, but he knows, and my dad sweats a tremendous amount, and yeah. he has a sweat ring. That's my dad. <laughs> he just like, wipe it off. And I, I know a lot of people don't like that effect of, like, people don't like hot foods, so it's just well, funny to me that... And I like hot foods, but that's one of the reasons I won't eat them like in like, public. public because I sweat like a pig and <laughs> I'll be sweating all over my food. I feel um, nothing by the way. Yeah, I was nothing actually yet. curious because I have a, a, a 1% solution of this at home um, oh, for do a family you? member. Yeah, and I couldn't find it. This so morning. that was, was prescribed? Bummed. No, uh, that so yeah, I think you can get up to 1% oh, okay. uh, non-prescribed and then anything higher. I don't really know, uh, so don't quote me on that percentage. But Yeah, uh, I'm just wondering what is a prescription strength or what are the parameters for a doctor? So if somebody found relief in small doses, you know, would a doctor do a 4%? Um, well, I think it comes in 8% because all the studies, oh, FDA has approved 8%. That's right. That's um, but I don't know where the FDA right. puts that, oh, you can do 4 or whatever. Yeah. Um, I just do you know they, they say that the it's inconclusive the studies at these lower doses but a lot of the problems are just people not finishing the study because right. it's too much of a problem getting on everything else that's mm -hmm. funny that they approved it though for well, and it works but it works so well yeah but it's i amazing just you know, like me. with people using it and stuff what's the risk of them doing it too often and having health effects well and actually none because topically you're not gonna oh, get topically okay yeah it's, it's all topically, topically not okay. ingest ingested whole nother story yeah, yeah. but um the reason why topically is because it it uh, disperses in in fat cells really quickly and so most of your skin cells are lipid cells um, except so yours <laughs> it wouldn't affect Scott at all. <laughs> it's going straight to the bloodstream. It's in the bone. It's in the bone. Um, but no, so yeah, it can't. It, it's not going to get into your bloodstream topically, mm. um, generally speaking. Well, um, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. This is saying it can be used for bruises and cramps. Yeah. Uh, the FDA has it listed as a lot of musculoskeletal problems, but I don't know what bruising... I mean... Uh, you're gonna you know desensitize that nerve like anything else so maybe that would help there's you know? um a person that we all know that's done some mma fighting and she's actually said that when used uh well like she'll get your height used to get really bad bruises she had something like in a little i don't know where she got it from or who it was it didn't look like okay, store well, but no yeah it's, oh i dropped i'm it. curious i want to see if um happens. but she would put it on her bruises and see notable improvement like way faster than what you would normally it seemed like so like hmm. if you and i got you know nasty bruise and initially it's that really dark purpley black um the day after she'd have that bruise she would put the stuff on it and then by evening time 10 or 12 hours later it had already lightened to the yellow greenish phase which normally doesn't happen for a couple of days i'm interested what she had in it i wonder if it just like breaks it know? looked kind of like witch doctor-ish like, like it looked like something yeah, cool. she picked up on a street corner Paltrow <laughs> picked it up somewhere. well and, it, and i don't know i don't know what it was and she mentioned to me at the time but i wonder if it's got some i wonder if it's like a clot buster of some sort that's I weird know. i don't know yeah i don't know i'll have to ask her i'm sure some mma fighter out there knows and they're like ah geez. well and hers was <laughs> she especially the face facial bruises didn't want to go to work looking beat up <laughs> right i don't think it hot happened often i think she was pretty successful <laughs> at her fights but every now and then she'd take a hit and be like i don't want to look like this at work so <laughs> which i oh, thought was actually think, pretty cool <laughs> i think it would be fun to have them and then just come to work and like god my my spouse geez. no that wouldn't be funny that would be horrible <laughs> well, like just people a, would feel so bad <laughs> just, you know you'd let them know pretty quick yeah i would think yeah. but it'd be a fun joke for a short time yeah that's good <laughs> so you said a green pepper has, this is what, 0.025%. So if that's a green pepper's strength, what would be the infamous ghost pepper? Well, and I don't know about other... ghost pepper. Well, it's really hard to class. So these are classified in Scoville units is uh, capsaicin. Um, and the they use, uh, um, uh, you know, in the early days, they were just actually, it's pretty subjective. They take five people and they put 
capsaicin on their tongue and how hot was it and then they give but it a number, different, right? But everyone's different, right? Yeah, and so it was huge. As that. every so Thai use, restaurant will uh, let you know. <laughs> well, yeah, so they use chromatography now, so they'll they'll just grind up the um, the pepper and then in the dried pepper, they the percentage of capsaicin in that pepper and then that's your Scoville units. Oh, okay. Um, but it's really tough to nail down because two peppers from the same plant will have different results just because it is oh, just like anything else right. different genes different whatever um and so they're actually crossbreeding these to make them hotter and hotter there's and i want to say it's the the connecticut reaper or it starts with a c yeah. it's a place reaper is what ha ha holds the guinness book of world records for the hottest um, pepper has been the official hottest pepper and it's like 1.3 million scoville units oh, no. there's another one out there called like pepper x that is their makers say it's three million, but it hasn't been confirmed by the uh, uh, Guinness Book of World Records yeah. yet. Yeah, because they do have to do the chromatography on it first to hmm. say because. So I just wonder, like, if you used uh, one of these peppers, these extreme peppers, we'll call them, uh, to play a joke, and it actually caused somebody a lot of pain and harm. Is it, it technically can. an assault of some sort? I you don't know? know, my son bought those to trick his friends with, and I, I told him, no, you have to let them yeah. know before. Like it has to be all voluntary. Yeah. and they did. They they did it, and you don't know it. what the outcome was. No, they spit them out. But when I was a kid, my dad got these peppers off my grandparents, some sort of a bush or a tree or whatever they had, but they were teeny. They were like this little and they were all like bright, bright red. And I've never seen them again, but he had like a bag like this that we brought home. They lived, uh, you know, in the South of uh, the country. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, he brought a bag like that and had it in the fridge and he would use it like really spring. My dad would cut up like one little pepper and cut like a little and, you know, use it in food or whatever. So one of my friends across the street, I had her come over and I'm like, yeah, we got these little candies from Mexico. And so she's like, really? And she grabbed a handful and threw them in. And I actually, it's one of the few times in my life where I li like felt horrible. Like she was crying face under the kitchen sink, just letting the water run on her face, like a, like a pepper spray event. Like she just had snot coming out of her <laughs> nose. But I think part of it too was it wasn't, she wasn't prepped for it. She was, and she ate like half the bag. Um, was your dad was, mad? Ugh. I don't know. Did she actually swallow it? I don't know. No. I don't know. I mean, we're still friends. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't kill me. But and I kind of forgot about it till we were prepping for this episode, and I'm like, I'm sorry, Allison, <laughs> 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 that I did that to you. And I don't think at the time I knew that milk would, you know, like fix that, you know, yeah. like or do better than water and stuff. But I had no idea the reaction was going to be that bad. But it actually looked painful and miserable and I think it was one of those where I was like I'm in so much trouble <laughs> yes but I don't think yeah. she ever told her parents and I don't think my parents ever oh, found what a out good friend oh, yeah I got in trouble because I did something similar yeah too. but it wasn't with peppers it was I took a tablespoon I think I was eight or nine at the time so this girl was probably like five. Oh. <laughs> That's really well, young. I know. It's and horrible. Trusting. Yeah. Now she has trust issues. She life. had trust issues. She, she knew it was a bad idea because she didn't want to. I convinced her. And uh, it was Tabasco sauce. So yeah. my dad used it on his yeah. plate. But in this tablespoon, I put half Tabasco and then I filled it with cayenne pepper, oh, chili geez. pepper, like any pepper I could think of. Like, this is going to be terrible. And I told her I'd give her something if she just try yeah. it. And she did. Um, but she couldn't breathe. Like she's like, and and then she started screaming. And then our moms are in the other room, like, oh my god, I killed her. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get you got any? Oh, trouble? I got in big trouble. <laughs> yeah, my mom. That's why you were like Parker. <laughs> Your friends yeah. have to sign a release. <laughs> yeah. We won't do this. Yeah, I got in trouble for that. Mm. So oh. we don't know how hot this is. Should we try it? Did it say what its Scoville units were? No, uh, he ordered those last year to try them, and he didn't have the labeling for it. So. And you didn't hear about it, so I'm guessing it wasn't like this big tremendous event where well, everybody freaked out. They like spit it out and you know went on like it was hot, but I just assumed they were I'm being teenagers. I'm like wanting and... to try it, but I'm afraid like I, really I didn't. Want you to. I didn't bring <laughs> uh, like a towel or anything to like it's just. Okay, I'm gonna do it, but it's gonna be so ugly. I'm just gonna have like mascara and snot running all down my face. I do have water, but I know that's not the best. No, it doesn't. Method. Well, and so, and the reason capsaicin actually is not uh, hydrophobic. It doesn't. Uh, I was gonna say that when I was researching. I thought that was funny. Yeah. That capsaicin is hydrophobic. 
Yeah, it doesn't. It's just funny to me that it's scared of water. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it won't. It uh, doesn't mix with water. It doesn't water doesn't repel it. It just doesn't so I'll attract drink my water. water, and it won't do me but, any good. No, but fat. You know, any sort of fat cells, it will disperse. <laughs> that's so cool. It's <laughs> just random fat cells. Like, yeah, what do you got around? Oh. Oh, Milk works bacon. pretty well. Mm. Oh, bacon. <laughs> bacon uh, might t- make it taste good. Okay, so how much should I eat? I don't know. Well, if you're going to, I mean, if you're going to do it. You think I should do the whole thing? Eh, uh, what if it burns a hole in my gut? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, so you just went for it. Out of control. Mm, it's getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, and you're the spicy girl, so I that... am. So Did it you feels it? like yeah. Well, I chewed it all up and swallowed it. So it feels like there's a lot of pepper. Like mm-hmm. it's like if you eat something with a bunch of my voice you're... is disappearing. <laughs> well, your eyes are slowly watering. But I don't feel like I've eaten. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Oh. oh my god. Was it the burp? I didn't burp. Oh. <laughs> that was just a kid doing whatever it does. It's hot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm but impressed like, you're not really sweating that much. There's she's no not sweating, yet. but she's red. Like you yeah. can see your, even your neck's red. <laughs> My body's like, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tomorrow I don't morning. know that I've had, I've had lots of jalapenos and stuff. This voice thing, was, I can't control that. But I would say it's hot, but not like, holy cow. Like I've had Thai food where I sweat. Yeah. Well, I wonder it's because I wonder if that's because during Thai food you're like continually ingesting well, and it's it broken for up. Like if hour. this had been powdered form, maybe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I will have more, more surface tomorrow, area <laughs> tomorrow morning on the toilet. I'm bleeding. <laughs> oh my god! Except for girls, don't go over too. So yeah, that's you true. You know, there's that. So Just passive. Diffusion. I wouldn't recommend it. That wasn't really fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've had, I went, I've been to a restaurant where they're like, if you can finish this plate of wings, it's free. Yeah. And I try one. I always do that. Ugh. Oh, you not finish? wings, not wings. Like I just like food, like the giant burger. You get your free meal. <laughs> oh. I thought you were talking about like That's a volume package. issue, not a, oh, <laughs> yeah. I can eat the crap out of a 10 pound burger, but. That's right. Wow. Yeah, so, no, like it was a, it, wings. yeah, it's spicy wing. If yeah. you can finish it, and I, I couldn't finish one wing. It was Ooh. like just touching to your lips and all of a sudden you're well, on Well, and fire. I like spicy, but I don't like it when it ruins the food. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah I went to um, a restaurant. It's, you know, like it's been probably a year with several friends. Actually, we took, got takeout and I ordered like a level five Thai food. It was, it had no like heat at all. <sighs> like I thought. And then... One of my friends tasted it and was like, oh, oh. but he's kind of wimpy anyway. <laughs> well, and if you eat a lot of spicy food, and you, guys you will. Know him, so I'll mm-hmm. tell you who it was later. Yeah. But, I yeah. know who you're <laughs> Yeah, pretty wimpy about it. And I was like, it's so hot. Plus, the Thai food was horrible. It tasted like ketchup noodles. Yeah. That's what I still call them to this day. Like, I won't go back to that restaurant because I'm like, they serve ketchup noodles. <laughs> well, and if you're, I mean, you're used to it, so you probably got yeah. some desensita- you know, desensitized nerves anyway. Yeah. And like I already feel better, right now. It's crazy to me because one in. You uh, should try it, Scott. Well, if you want to see snot run on my nose for the next twenty minutes, that's not attractive at all. Yeah. So, um, so it, it's going to affect everybody differently. Though. Yeah, yeah, and they're you know everybody's different in the amount of receptors you have, and yeah, you know. So this may or you. may not work for somebody. I didn't feel anything on my arm. I like, don't feel no anything difference. other than the menthol. Right, I can smell and that. You can smell it. Yeah, it smells yeah. like kind of Bengayish or something. But it is a super low dose of the capsaicin, so. There's that, hmm. but definitely want to wash it off before you do, and got to use soap because obviously water's not going to work very well. Mm-hmm. Hydrophobic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. All right. Well, if you like what you saw today, you can check us out on YouTube or on a podcast, or visit our website, medicalconfessions.com.